Do you want to get your Bernese Mountain Dog to walk perfectly to heel on your left hand side with that perfect loose leash? Well don't worry because that is exactly what we're going to be talking about in today's video. Welcome back to the Fenrir Bernie's Mountain Dog Show. If you are new here, my name's Will. I'm a canine behaviorist and I'm the founder and CEO of FenrirCanineLeaders.com. This channel is dedicated to helping you learn everything that you could possibly ever want to know about the incredible Bernie's Mountain Dog and then how to become high level canine leaders that can raise perfect Bernie's Mountain Dog companions. So if you love Bernie's Mountain Dogs, start this amazing journey by hitting that subscribe button, turning on the notification bell, and that way you'll never miss a future video. Now let's dive into today's topic and we're talking about how to get your Bernese mountain dog puppy to walk perfectly to heel from day one. As a canine behaviorist one of the most common problem behaviors that people come to me seeking guidance and advice for is about their dog walking terribly on a lead. It turns that experience that should be a glorious highlight of your day into one of the worst part of your days. People start to avoid it, the dog isn't being exercised like it should, that causes a whole raft of other behavior problems and it's a very slippery slope. And Unfortunately, it also costs a lot of money to be able to get an expert like myself in to be able to come and help you step by step, be able to modify that behavior and train the right behavior again. It's a difficult task. It's quite a lengthy one. And like I say, not only does it cause a lot of heartache for owners, but it also can be very expensive. What I want to help you with is being able to get it right first time round. Save yourself a fortune and save yourself all of that heartache. So how is it that we achieve that? Now, walking to heel is part of my five, my basic mandatory parts of obedience that all dogs should have if we want a perfect canine companion. We cover it at length in my perfect puppy program. The link's in the description if you are interested in that and the really detailed step-by-step -step process. But in this video, I want to give you the overarching approach of how it is that we're able to achieve such high levels of success from day one. And we break it down into a very straightforward step-by-step -step process. The first stage is that we need to let the Bernese Mountain Dog understand that I want you on my left-hand side by my side looking up to me for guidance and direction very straightforward to do that we use a lure mark and reinforce process we use a food law we get it in front of their nose we get them to follow the retreat we lure them into the right position which is by our left hand side we mark it with the terminology that we want to use most people would use heel but you can use whatever you want and when they're in that position we mark it and we reinforce it by giving them access to the treat dead straightforward we drill that over and over and over again the low distraction environment where we can keep their attention that stage one that way the dog now knows that this term heel means that i want you on my left hand side looking up to me excellent we've done that so now where do we go because just because we can do that inside like here in the Fenrir studio and we can achieve that very quickly it doesn't mean that you can now take your Bernie's mountain dog into Times Square New York and walk through it and have a dog walking perfectly not being distracted so the next stage is that we need to teach them that just how I want you on my left hand side if we're stood in one spot I want you on my left hand side no matter where I'm going what direction I'm turning in where I'm moving so we start by adding 90 degree turns 180 degree turns 270 360 clockwise anti-clockwise adding in some steps a few steps forward a turn another few steps forward a 180 come back the other way and we're constantly utilizing that method of lure mark reinforce lure mark reinforce we do that over and over again we drill it we make it a really fun positive engaging experience not only is teaching heel to our dogs but it's also building communication building trust and building relationship which is so incredibly important to the wider topic of being able to have a perfect canine companion now when we've drilled that we practice that at that point we then add the lead because we want the dog to associate this new thing i've learned to heal with this tool this lead they are the same thing we, the one they're both the same thing if the lead goes on i'm walking to heal doesn't matter lead heal lead heal one in the same so we add the lead and we go through that same process and we drill over weeks over the first days weeks and months however long it takes baby steps and we set our dog up for success and we reinforce and reward that success then we move on to the next stage which is now adding the distraction layer adding up time adding up distance removing that marker removing that reinforcement because we're not bribing our dogs to do this we're helping them teach them we're helping them understand and communicate what we want and then we remove the rewards because they're doing it because they want to work with us because of that relationship that we've built with them across all areas of canine ownership not just that one piece of the puzzle that is obedience 
So now we taught them that. Brilliant, excellent, absolutely fantastic. And what we do is we might go from this indoor low distraction environment to an outdoor low distraction environment, to a very quiet road where there's not much traffic or not many people, to a park where there's no dogs. Then we slowly build up where there's some dogs but far away away. Maybe it's a slightly busier road. Maybe it's a, a park where there's people walking. And slowly but surely we build that up 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 and we set our dog up for success and we praise and we reward that success and that way over weeks and months and even those first couple of years we get to a point where we have a dog that will work perfectly to heal regardless of where we find ourselves in and that is the essence of how you teach a puppy to walk to heal it isn't rocket science the theory behind it is quite straightforward but there is some stumbling blocks that people will often come up against that I want to quickly touch on now before we wrap up this video the first one is about creating a negative lead association what we want to do, like I mentioned earlier, is have the lead and heel be one in the same. What we don't want to do is from the second we bring our dog home is to attach a lead to them that we're going to be using to walk them and give them complete free roam of that lead and building up that concept in their mind that even if they've got a lead on, they can do what they want, go where they want, pull where they want and just behave how they want. That's not what we want to create that association with the lead with. So what we do is we only use the lead that we're going to walk our dog with for part of our femoral basic obedience drill that's part of our perfect puppy program that helps them understand that the lead is a good thing but we remain calm it doesn't get that excitement level up and we also and then we only ever use it when we're then working on heel and we ensure that we set our dog up for 100 percent success rate when the lead is on what we don't do is give them that free access for a few weeks then we get to the stage of wanting to put the lead on and then the dog's just confused well i've just spent the last few weeks with this on doing whatever i want and now you want me to not do that and you get frustrated and wound up i don't understand communication breaks down relationship breaks down your leadership breaks down and you're just setting yourself up for failure now what we can't do is ever put our dog in a situation where they're not safe and under control so if you're going out and exercising your dog and socializing your dog don't use the lead that you're going to be walking them on get a really lightweight long line or just a piece a long piece of paracord attach it to their collar wherever you take them just drop it on the floor now what we want to do with that is then find that the dog will forget that it's even on he'll just drag it around and play as normal so we're not creating the the lead that we're going to be walking in is a completely different thing so we can maintain that that lead that we're going to be walking on is the heel walking lead they'll forget this one's on but in any of those god forbid situations we can quickly quickly pick it up and reel the dog back in no problem whatsoever so that's an easy fix for creating a bad association with the lead and flipping it and creating that 100% positive association with the lead. This lead, heel, same thing, lead goes on, you're on my left hand side. Awesome, no problem. The next one is around patience and then that's setting our dog up for failure like we've just mentioned. It isn't rocket science, the process is straightforward. What is difficult however, it doesn't just because it's not rocket science doesn't mean it's easy, the process is straightforward and simple, but what's difficult is it requires high levels of patience, consistency, hard work and dedication. All are characteristics of a good leader. Now, if you're a good canine leader, you're consistent and patient and hard working, you remain calm and consistent at all times, you will have a dog that walks perfectly to heal. If you're flaky, if you're a little bit lazy, you get wound up easily, you can't remain calm, you're not consistent with your training, don't be surprised when you have a Bernese Mountain dog that quite quickly starts to misbehave and you have a lot of difficulty and struggling with. So be a calm, consistent leader set your dog up for success because then we can praise and reward that success if we're lazy and we let them fail we set them up for failure then we get frustrated and we even need to correct them and punish that bad behavior which a lot of people don't like to do because a lot of people follow a positive only methodology but if you're following a positive only methodology and you've set your dog up to fail now they fail and we've got no way of being able to tell them that that is not the right behavior because we've got no way of being able to correct it so now that dog will not have any consequences for that behavior and if it's a behavior that's fun like pulling is for a dog it's a very self-rewarding behavior pulling on a lead they'll start to do that behavior more and more and that could have easily been solved by not setting our dog up to fail by being consistent dedicated proactive and preemptive setting them up for success and we would have had 
abundance of success early on from day one then you don't have to fork out all that money to get the problem fixed or go through the heartache or even worse give up and give your dog to a shelter or even unfortunately euthanize because that is what we're trying to achieve here at Fenrir is about having incredible owners with wonderful well-controlled dogs so that we keep them out of shelters and we keep them from being unnecessarily put down so if you enjoyed that video if you found it helpful make sure you give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe if you are new here we've got two new Bernie mountain dog videos come into this channel every single week so i promise you there's going to be something for you so make sure you subscribe before we go and i'll see you on the next episode of the femrin bernie's mountain dog show